Redemption of your Strawman account. Filing a UCC1 with the Treasury Department. Is there a Treasury bond in my name? United States Strawman UCC slash Redemption Process, A Study. UCC slash Redemption Process. There are numerous views and theories held by supporters and deniers of the process known as UCC slash Redemption. This study will look at some of the main subjects that are discussed about a redemption process. There are various contingents involved, as well as facts that have been disclosed by different sources concerning the information. What is a birth certificate? Is it a negotiable instrument? Is it a promissory note? Does it have commercial value? Is it a transactional instrument? If so what was our value at birth? The birth certificate that is kept on record at your local county and slash or state, is it a contract? Does your birth certificate give the state, and tragically in the end, the federal government control over all past, present, and future transactions which the individual named on a birth certificate enters? The residents of the United States are sovereign individuals. Freedom does not exist if the people are apathetic concerning their status in society. Free to be slaves? What is the UCC redemption process? Will the filing of an Uniform Commercial Code, UCC, financing statement, addendum, and slash or change statement slash amendment include all transactions, civil matters, as well as any criminal activity? If a person follows the steps to the UCC slash redemption process, will they gain any actual value through the federal government? Will there have to be some value given in return? Or is the entire UCC redemption process a deceptive maneuver, or trick, that will only bring about greater retaliation by the government agencies upon which individuals involved in the process, file with, and include in the redemption process? The majority of lawyers view the entire UCC process only in terms of litigation and adjudication. The truth is, the UCC is legislated by an administrative law that systematizes the rules for all commercial transactions between nations, states, and even between individuals. The courts do acknowledge that they do not possess either the authority or jurisdiction to alter or nullify any of the articles of the UCC. The courts will only consider those gray areas as to who holds the superior position. The party that filed the UCC first, or the one who consummated it first. The courts have addressed, and determined in specific situations, what can be thought of as a fixture. As it is relative to real property under the Uniform Commercial Code HTTP colon slash slash realit-bytes.hubpages.com slash hub slash what hyphen is hyphen the hyphen uniform hyphen commercial hyphen code hyphen ucc dot. Dario Bush 2012 Strawman Freedom Sovereignty UCC 1 The UCC Financing Statement Once a person files a UCC form, and it is registered by a state's UCC office, the filing of that document becomes a legal document, it becomes part of the public record. The person which filed the document is the secured party when it comes to the UCC filing. This is a fact of legal procedures. The UCC department employees of each state become the curators and are compelled to follow very specific procedures and rules. If the UCC filing complies with all the stipulations of those rules and procedures, then the document by law needs to be recorded. There are minor diversities in the subsections of the UCC from one state to another, and even between countries. For the most part the majority of the commercial rules and procedures will be the same globally, they will be uniform. Thereby coming by the title of Uniform Commercial Code. Every state within the United States has UCC filing offices, there are offices in every the United States territory and protectorates of the, the United States there are even UCC filing offices established in foreign nations. It is an administrative action when an UCC form is filed, accepted, and recorded by the UCC office. It will be stamped with a file number, date, hour, and the exact minute of filing. The UCC financing statement UCC 1, commissions a secured party's status in a commercial transaction allowed by the Articles of the UCC, 
as well as assorted sections of the United States Code that deal primarily with property. After a secured party files a UCC form it becomes part of the public record, that a secured and vested interest is holding a superior claim over any and all other parties who have an interest, but file after the secured party, must acknowledge the pre-existed position. The secured party may make changes to the UCC financing statement, UCC1, if they file an amendment, UCC3, which makes reference to the original UCC that was filed. Do not mistake the facts. The UCC deals only with secured or vested interest. However, the facts are clear. The UCC deals with secured, vested interest, and slash or the possession of the property, it does not deal with the title at all. The title is a different discussion. The birth certificate. The first question to discuss is the question of the birth certificate. Is it an instrument of commerce? Is it a promissory note? Does your birth certificate have any actual commercial value? The answer to each of these questions is no, or at least it should be. When a child is born, a document is prepared which is an authorization to produce a certificate of live birth. The parents and slash or the doctor are given an application which is ultimately a commercial contract. They will endorse as to their witnessing the creation of both the child, and a commercial document. The document created at birth is an application for a federal certificate of live birth, it is evidence that there has been a commercial contract set up. This contract establishes the freeborn child to a status of ward of the state. In a few weeks, the actual certificate of live birth, which was based on the application, is handed over to and filed in Washington, D.C. The certificate of live birth is a bonded instrument. On the reverse of the certificate is a single letter, A-N, followed by eight numbers. In recent times the same serial number of the bond is stamped on the back of a social security card. The second thing to discuss is the birth certificate itself. The original birth certificate, which is prepared in the county your birth, at the time of birth. Is it a contract, giving the state control over everything associated with the individual named on the certificate? No. The document prepared at birth is not a contract, it has no commercial value. This birth record is evidence that a live birth has transpired. This information is then disseminated throughout the various federal, state, and county district levels. It is irrefutable evidence that a living, breathing, person was born, and its existence would be registered. Even those born on foreign soil are registered with either a certificate of naturalization, citizenship, or some other type of document which gives them authorization to remain in residence in the country. It is public agencies that specify the name on the document to be an actual person, not just a commercial entity. How does a birth certificate have value? It is not the birth certificate, it is the bond on a commercial entity. At the time of registration, the corporation of the United States http colon slash slash reality bytes dot hub pages dot com slash hub slash the hyphen corporation hyphen of hyphen the hyphen United hyphen states hyphen of hyphen America, through its Treasury Department creates a bond. This bond is also known by the human's name in capital letters. A strawman http colon slash slash realty dash bytes dot hub pages dot com slash hub slash strawman hyphen or hyphen u hyphen a hyphen person hyphen or hyphen collateral is created to be used in all legal and financial matters. More on this later. The bond number itself can be found on the actual certificate of live birth on the back of the document. Once the county birth record is received by the federal government, the bond is created. Once both of these actions occur, the federal government releases the certificate of live birth announcing the creation of a new revenue source. The value of the bond is based on the power of the state to tax the future wealth and property of the human being named on the document. There have been some prints of individual master files IMF, that show the bond placed on the newborn having a value of around $650. There is a catch however. Any profit which is created by the investment during the life, 
right up to the death of the individual, of every living, breathing, male or female, remains the property of the state. All property is considered to be owned by the Corporation of the United States. This is easily seen by the seizures without due process which occur daily. The Creature from Jekyll Island, G. Edward Griffin Federal Reserve Act in 1913 One of the most crucial years in the history of the United States, both for the government and the American citizens was the year of 1933. It was only a mere 20 years after the passage of the Federal Reserve Act in 1913-https://realitybytbytes.hubpages.com/hub-pages.com/hub-pages.com/hub-pages.com/hub-pages.com/hub-pages.com/hub-pages.com/hub-pages.com/hub-pages.com/hub-pages.com/hub-pages.com/
people at the Treasury Department Analysis and Control Division of the IRS where they keep the files claim that the birth certificate does not have a commercial value. They do however admit that the certificates of live births are real and are kept on file. Others have declared that the application for the birth certificate actually does have a commercial value which is determined by the ability of the government to tax any future earnings of the individual named on the documents. The applications are not kept on file in D.C. itself, some claim they are filed in Puerto Rico, others claim it is Switzerland. National UCC Administration There is a national UCC administration which the states, the protectorates, and the District of Columbia had formed. The United States has been partitioned into six UCC regions. If one of the UCC offices in a particular region does not accept a properly prepared UCC another office within that region will. A person can have a regional filing recorded within a region state and have it maintain the same thing as filing within their state of birth. A person born outside of the United States, but still is allowed to reside here and receive a social security card, can still file a UCC form in whatever state or region in which they were living when they received permission to live and remain here. It appears that the UCC as well as other paperwork that is required to be filed with the birth state or region are all logged in the mailroom at 1500 Pennsylvania NW, Washington, D.C. This is the address of the Analysis and Control Division of the IRS. The documents are examined by the Secret Service, the FBI, and Justice Department. The documents are known at the Analysis and Control Division as UCC Contract Trusts. UCC Contract Trusts and Direct Treasury Accounts There is a significant difference between UCC Contract Trusts and Direct Treasury Accounts which are used pre-nominally for the trading of Treasury bonds, which are managed by the Bureau of Public Debt. There are many UCC and Bill of Exchange documents that arrive at 1500, Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest are mistakenly sent to the BPD. The mistake that many people who file UCC forms makes is a reference to the Treasury Direct or Direct Treasury account within their paperwork. Within the Analysis and Control Division inside the IRS building in D.C., UCC contract trusts are processed and then the documents are forwarded to one of the two IRS centers. If you file east of the Mississippi the documents are sent to Cincinnati, Ohio. If you file west of the Mississippi they forward them to Fresno, California. Your UCC files and documents are going to be scrutinized by the Secret Service, the Justice Department, FBI, then sent to the CID, it is also sent to the IRS Technical Support Division, TSD, within the state that the secured party started the discharge. Federal Reserve and IRS equals private corporations. IRS Technical Support Division, TSD. Here are some important points to know concerning the administration and purpose of the TSD. Almost every single financial institution which is connected to the Federal Reserve System has registered or contracted access to an account with IRS called a Treasury Tax and Loan Account, TTL. This TTL account in every financial institution is managed through the TSD office which can be found within most of the IRS state offices. Because of this IRS reconstruction the Technical Support Manager, TSM, in every state divisional office of the IRS has been given the same authority once held by the district director. When a notice of levy slash lien is delivered to a financial institution by the IRS, the financial institution simply responds by making an entry in their computer. This simple action transfers the asset from the person who made the deposit into an IRS TTL account. This means that the asset never actually physically leaves their office. There are some financial institutions that do not maintain a TTL account. They simply hold the funds for 21 days before transferring the amount directly to the Internal Revenue Service. When a financial institution receives a release of levy slash lien from the IRS the financial institution makes a simple computer entry and the funds are transferred from the TTL account into the account of the depositor if it is applicable. If a UCC form is prepared properly and filed with the bank can be an administrative obstruction action in which a secured party can use to show a prior and superior claim to those assets on deposit. 
there are certain banks that will not will accept UCC documents. Do not use one of these banks but find one that will accept the form and deposit your funds there. Collateralizing America A great series for more information on the redemption process. Correct way to have claims discharged. The way to correctly have claims discharged with the IRS as well as in the public sector using the UCC contract trust is to present by the the secured party a bonded registered bill of exchange, and this needs to be sent straight to the Secretary of the Treasury. When a claim is made either by the IRS, a federal, or state taxing agency, the claim can then have a stamp imprinted upon it stating accepted for value HTTP. This needs to be done by the secured party and it must be sent through certified, or registered, mail directly to the Secretary of the Treasury to be discharged. This is documented and authorized through public policy. HJR 192, Title 4, Sector 400, and 1 of the Federal Reserve Act, the Supreme Court's Confirmation in Guarantee Trust of New York v. Henwood, E.T.L., 1939, and Public Law 73-10. Such action is further confirmed in U.S.C. Title 12, Title XXVIII, Sector 1641, 3002 and the Foreign Sovereign Immunity Act. Getting back to the supposed value of the birth certificate this is the facts as I ascertained them. The number of birth certificates that are referenced in UCC financing statements that have been stamped and filed in the state UCC filing offices is in the hundreds of thousands. Under the revised version of Article, Chapter, 9 of the UCC, July 1, 2001, such filers had until June 30, 2002 to refile the UCC-1 within their state of birth. If they reference to their original filing they could maintain the original date of filing which would then be filed with the Secretary of the Treasury. If this is not done by July 1, 2002 it would result in the loss of their original filing date and also their status as the secured party by the Secretary of the Treasury. Department of Treasury admits that millions of UCC financing statements have been filed. The Department of the Treasury admits that there are millions of UCC filings by secured parties which have been diverted to the Analysis and Control Division of the IRS, in Washington D.C. nobody that I am aware of has ever had criminal charges brought against them that resulted in a prosecution. There are many that do not get processed because they were not complete or filed properly. This shows that those people who have followed the correct procedures in filing their UCC documents using the redemption process have not committed any crime. This goes for prosecution by the Department of the Treasury, the Secret Service, the Department of Justice or the IRS. Will filing UCC financing statements and change slash amendments cover all commercial activity, civil cases, and also criminal actions? Government sources claim that all commercial activity in the United States and other countries fall under the legislated, administrative, law which is also called the Uniform Commercial Code. Once processed through the Federal Reserve System and slash or the Department of the Treasury these transactions are bonded. Although the court system makes claims to have jurisdiction over commercial transactions that seem to break criminal laws. In reality the UCC articles on their own are administrative law and do not fall under any jurisdiction of the courts or to litigation. My birth certificate is a bank note. The bond number on your certificate of live birth is also stamped on Federal Reserve notes. When an application and certificate of live birth is delivered to the Department of the Treasury in Washington, D.C. that certificate becomes bonded, there is an account produced which we know as the Social Security number, this means there are funds borrowed against these accounts. The credit approved on paper is then invested in stocks and bonds. The Bureau of Engraving states that even the Federal Reserve uses the bond number which is stamped on the certificate of live birth as it is also stamped on the Federal Reserve notes themselves. The bond number has one letter from, AN, which is followed by eight numbers. You will notice recently printed social security cards are now also printed with the bond number on the back in red ink. It is a fact that every single living, breathing human being in the United States is bonded and used in commercial activities by the Corporation of the United States which has received them.
people who have properly and correctly filed within their birth state or UCC region will create a completely separate entity or a secured party completely separate from their government created debtor. Strawman. When the filing and the instruction order, the chargeback, the IRS 1040 ES form, the AFV stamp birth certificate lets the Secretary of the Treasury know that the secured party has been created with a prior and superior claim to all the assets and liabilities of the debtor. Straw man. These liabilities should be forwarded to the Secretary to be processed and discharged through the UCC contract trust. UCC 1 Financing Statement, Bankers Fraud Exposed there are more and more states that are now accepting the UCC financing statement and addendum. There are more and more states that are now accepting the UCC financing statement and addendum. I have not heard of one state that has sought prosecution for any filing as being illegal, civil, or criminal. There are a few states that are still trying to figure out what to do with the revised UCC code, July 1, 2001. There are several counties that have no provisions for the perfecting of the UCC filing under Article 9-333, A, as a possessor lien. When 9-333, A, was included it was the first time an UCC had a form of lien by name included in the filing. Is the redemption process an attempt to gain something for nothing from the Treasury Department? After June of 1933 the international financiers who are the actual owners of the Federal Reserve System took ownership and control over all private and real property, this was done with the permission of Congress, and an executive order signed by the President. By instituting your person to the status of the secured party for the government created entity listed on the certificate of live birth is not the same thing as getting something for nothing. These procedures set up by the government were put in place so that the secured party could reclaim a part of what is rightfully theirs under the, the United States Constitution. Congress made provision beginning in the early 1900s for every minor to reinstate their status as an American under the, the United States Constitution when they became of age. You were a minor when the original contract, application, was entered into by your parents. These provisions were scattered throughout various legislative acts, joint resolutions, and executive orders, many in 1933, as well as in the Congressional Record based on Public Policy H.J.R. 192, codified in Public Law 73-10 and confirmed by the, the United States Supreme Court in 1939. See Guarantee Trust of New York v. Henwood, E.T.L. By these placement actions the government has kept the details so vague and hard to reference that no person could remedy himself without persistent research. There was not until recently, very many people who even knew that these procedures existed. The most important part of the redemption of your strawman is filing your UCC with the birth state or UCC regional office, the secretary of the treasury and filing in the state of residence is required to the redemption process. The International Monetary Fund using the Secretary of the Treasury as its representative, and using the Federal Reserve and the ability of the IRS to collect revenue has virtual control over every single citizen's assets. Once the secured party uses the UCC slash redemption they will create the right to reverse this control over the government created debtor, straw man. What the secured party accomplishes with this is to put themselves on the same level as the Secretary of the Treasury and this will lead to taking back the control over their own assets. A properly prepared and correctly filed UCC filing will ensure in the future to protect the property and assets of the secured party. These filings will make it clear that there is a legal and vested interest control of the secured party. You will not have to deal in court jurisdictions and stay out of the area of controversy. Does the redemption process entail a simple get-rich-quick scheme that will only end up with the filer coming under closer scrutiny by the government against those who participate in a UCC filing? Under the UCC slash redemption process the secured party does not obtain the actual application for a certificate of live birth. This means that the process is only to be used for an accepted for value answer to any commercial claim. If a written and contracted claim is received by the debtor, Strawman. It can be accepted for value by the secured party. 
the claim can then be discharged when the proper documents are forwarded through the Secretary of the Treasury to the UCC Contract Trust which remains filed with the Analysis and Control Division of the IRS. There are many people who have tried to sidestep or manipulate this fact just to find that law enforcement as well as the courts will be more than happy to enforce and adjudicate. IRS CID and FBI are very quickly able to use threats and intimidation to unlawfully dissuade what only the courts of law should decide upon. The Internal Revenue Service has increased its use of illegal threats and intimidation. The Department of the Treasury employees make it quite clear that they will not accept or perform any actions to faxed orders, telephoned or wired instructions. It must be hard copies that are original in both signature and any forms or documents. These documents must be delivered by certified, or registered, mail and must be filed with both the State of Residence as well as the Secretary of the Treasury. The Internal Revenue Service has increased its use of illegal threats and intimidation. They use the FBI to aid them in their attempts to admonish and stop the presentments of any bill of exchange documents delivered by the secured party to the Secretary. This does not mean that properly presented and prepared negotiable instruments from a legitimate secured party should and can be legally processed under law through local financial institutions by the person making the claim. This is done through the Secretary of the Treasury and recorded by the financial institution through the Treasury Tax and Loan TTL, account. There are some employees at the Department of the Treasury who continue to misdirect many of the documents which is presented by a secured party to the Secretary of the Treasury by mislabeling them as Treasury securities, they are not Treasury securities, then they are forwarded to the Bureau of Public Debt rather than send them to the Analysis and Control Division of the IRS and the UCC Contract Trust. From what I have been able to learn is that the discharge of claims in the public sector whether federal or state claims, issued by the Internal Revenue Service are easily discharged with a simple computer entry and transfer of credit and debt through the computer using the IRS Technical Support Division. There is verification that this process has come from the Special Procedure Handling Offices of the IRS. When a secured party utilizes the Uniform Commercial Code correctly the field is leveled as it pertains to the degree of commercial transactions. Despite the blockage of information as well as being told false information we the people are continuing to gain knowledge and information regardless of being the target of threats and blackmail. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. It seems that over 25 million Americans have successfully redeemed their strawman and achieved access to their strawman trust account before May 26, 2003. It is rumored that many of these 25 million were political insiders, politicians, judges, lawyers, corporate executives, senior military, secret service, and security services personnel and their families and others, are implicated in the establishment and the maintaining in this fictional and fraudulent system. A system that has been used to abuse the mass population of the United States for over 70 years prior to 2003. That averages out to over 357,000 people who found a way around this ruse every year. Surely the number of people filing UCC financing statements have risen dramatically since 2003. Since the true knowledge of this process is making its way out to the United States population the number of people filing has incrementally increased. It seems that if 25 million Americans knew that this was a scam for well over 70 years, yet not one broke their silence to make the rest of us aware of the charade then it is safe to assume that these people were part of the conspiracy about the fraud perpetrated against the American people. The amount of people who took part in this process while remaining silent explains why this web of lies has been held in in place for so many years. Enormous numbers of people on the inside who had knowledge of the truth aged and received benefits from it explains the slight possibility that they might divulge some of the details about the scam by releasing anonymous details without putting themselves in great danger if they were careful about remaining anonymous while they did so. There is an old saying by Edmund Burke, 1729-1797. All that is required to allow evil to flourish is that too many good men do nothing. I believe that most people will do nothing to redeem themselves simply because they believe they are better off being property of the state and being held responsible for a government created straw man is just fine with them. 
That is the reason that this deception has endured for so long. Millions of Americans have consciously done nothing to disrupt the status quo even though they knew about the scheme and even benefited from the fraudulent system. Even though they knew the system was enslaving the American people as well as probably enslaving the rest of the world as well. Project Camelot interviews David Ick. If this is done this whole charade of control and ownership will end. It would probably be safe to assume that the same fraud is being committed against people in the UK, Canada, Australia, and other nations that the system of enslavement was established. This is to say that there were millions of people in other countries outside the United States who have also become part of the conspiracy. There has been a long time planned by global bankers to create a new world order. This order would allow those in the order to own the world and everyone and every single thing in it. This conspiracy has been perpetrated by enormous numbers of lemmings and sycophants who thought that in the end they would benefit from the process. If they understood the entire plot or just their small part in it is hard to determine. It does not seem that many average people who were not part of the conspiracy of this devious system will discover and take advantage of the redemption process the number of average people learning the processes of the redemption process will grow rapidly now that the information is making its way to them via the internet and other sources. Once you become aware of this situation, you should do everything in your power to fully understand the process, and pass on your knowledge to others. If this is done this whole charade of control and ownership will end. This will end the global financier's plot to create a new world order that will turn the world's people into nothing more than slaves serving their global masters. Beware. There are many strawman slash redemption scams out there. Do not be fooled by these. Do not pay someone to teach you the process or to file for you. Do your own research and make sure all the documentation has followed the correct procedures. Also make sure the documents are filled out and filed correctly. You are responsible for this. This is not a simple process and you will have to educate yourself as to the correct procedures. If you feel someone is trying to scam you or place liens on your property, my best advice would be to contact your local FBI office.